Have you ever wondered how you can create amazing serious style trailer images like this? Well I've got some great news, you're in the right place. Today I'm going to show you what equipment you need, how to capture the images and how to process them. I'm Matt and this is Everyday Astro. Everything I use to capture these images is overkill. In truth, all you need is a DSLR, a lens with a focal length of over 200mm and a tripod. So take everything I use with a pinch of salt. It is simply what I have available and so I make the most of it. In my case, the lens I'm using is a William Optics Space Cat 51. This is just quite simply the best glass I have available for the job. The camera I'm using is a Canon EOS 800D. It has been astro modified, but that is not a requirement for taking these particular images. So don't worry if you're using a stock DSLR. The last thing I'm using is the Skywatcher EQ3 mount. Uh, I'm simply using this because I have no other way of attaching my space cat to a tripod. So again, I'm just making the most of what I have available. The last thing there is the tripod. Uh, I would recommend using the cheapest and least stable tripod you have. The whole point of these images is you want to create some movement. Uh, that's no good if you are using a rock solid tripod. So the recommendation here is find the cheapest bit of kit you can that is as flimsy as possible because it will give you the best results. And that's basically it. So let's get this stuff outside and let's get set up ready for imaging. So just before we start imaging, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to thank Steve Brown for his help with this. Steve is an absolute legend when it comes to serious images and he's taught me all the basics and got me started in this amazing imaging train. I've put some links below to Steve's Twitter and YouTube accounts and I would highly recommend that you check him out. And again, thanks for your help on this one, Steve. Well, they say the best laid plans go wrong when they hit reality, and I've hit reality. So all the video I took last night, uh, I don't know what I had, I had a setting wrong somewhere in the camera, it's come out black. So we're, um, we're gonna play make-believe this afternoon. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pretend this is now nighttime, those clouds aren't there, and the back telescope over there is pointing directly at Sirius. And then we're gonna have a go at trying to take some images of him. So some really sort of key bits to get started. You'll notice over here that the tripod is set up with its legs maximum extension. Again, it creates the least stability that there is within that tripod. And I've also shifted the counterweight all the way down to the end of its bar. Again, just shifting that center of gravity away from the middle of the tripod. It creates more instability. So obviously what you want to try and do is frame Sirius in the center of your sensor because that will give you the best uh, ability to move around within that uh, once you start taking the images. And I'm going to be taking them using ISO 200 and I'm going to range between 4 and 6 seconds for the images and see which ones come out best from there. So let's just go over there, I'll, I'll give you a little bit show of how I knock the tripod around, uh, which is great fun, uh, and then we'll see where we get from that. So from here on out, it's how many fun ways can you find to tap the tripod. Let's see how many we can get. really is great fun trying to see how many different ways you can find to shake Sirius about. I'd be really interested to know what you find the best when you give this a try, so do leave some comments below and let me know what you find the best. Okay, so there's one more type of image I want to talk about. And for this one you will either need to have your DSLR connected to a laptop using something like Astro Photography Tool or an interferometer. And these ones are where you just knock Sirius out of focus and put it as far to the left of your sensor as possible and you just take repeated exposures one after the other. Now, I use them at 0.8 seconds, uh, so that's a, a nice quick image, and I just use Astro Photography Tool to keep taking them as often as humanly possible uh, all the way across the other, until it goes out the other side of the sensor. This normally results in at least a few hundred images uh, that you end up having to stack, uh, but they do create some really good effects, and we'll have a look at that in a minute when we put those together in Star Stacks. So again, I think that's a really interesting one to try. Uh, and again, it's just something different other than just the serious trails. Uh, but let's head inside and let's do some editing. OK, 
Okay, so we finished our night of imaging and I've uploaded some of the images now into Photoshop so that we can start to have a look at how we're going to edit these. As you can see, the, the image itself is, is very small as, as part of the overall canvas. So one of the fairly obvious first things we're going to do is just crop this right down so that our image fits into the frame. And I think something along those lines looks pretty good to me. So that's now our working image. And as you can see, this is pretty good. Straight out the camera, you've got an image that you could quite happily share online. I think there are, however, just a few things you can do in order to make that look better. So the first thing I tend to do is just a curves adjustment and I just, just lock it so the brightest bits don't come up uh, and then just pull some of that up to try and just get those colours to really stand out without overblowing the core. So somewhere around there just be just fine. If we just have a quick look, so that's, you can see the difference there. Like it just really makes those colours stand out. And the other thing I tend to do is just a uh, vibrance and saturation uh, increase. And I have found that 25 seems to be about the right number to increase that. So again, we've gone from here to here, and that looks pretty nice. Nicely shareable. I uh, do have one extra tip though, and that is how to clear some of the noise you will find in the background of some of your images. I mean, I, I, I say this in the nicest possible way, but this is about as subtle as a break to the face as a way of doing it, um, but I, I think it does work. So the simple way I do this is to select colour range, uh, and I pick that background, and I find the point where I think it's, um, you know, got, got most of the colour, uh, or most of the background, sorry. So what I've selected now, see, what it has selected is pretty much all of the darkness, and not much of the colour. Um, and then I simply take my paintbrush tool, uh, I pick the colour as properly uh, black, and I quite literally just paint out all of the issues, um, which really just gives you that solid black background, just making sure you've covered it all. And so if we just do a bit of a zoom in now, look, you'll see there's almost no issues in this background at all. So yeah, it really does just make a nice, clean way of getting rid of the noise, albeit, as I said, not particularly subtle. But hey, if it works, who cares whether it's subtle or not? And that, that's the final image. This is probably my, my fav favourite image from last night's imaging. I'm uh, really, really pleased with this one. I think the colours work well. I think it hasn't got that bright core. Uh, so I, I think it's just a really good looking image. And if I'm honest, I'm probably going to have that one printed. The other images I mentioned last night were where we had the trail of uh, serious uh, bloats, for want of a better word. So this is one of our images from last night, and as you can see, each one of these is just serious, ever so slightly moving further across the screen. Uh, hopefully you'll get more colour variation than I got. I don't know why I got so little last night, but as you can see, most of these are staying broadly the same colour, rather than picking up that range of colour colour that you see in, in Sirius. But this, this is a really simple system. If you haven't used Star Stacks before, it's free to download for both Mac and Windows. And you quite simply load your files in and then you hit the stack button and it quite literally goes along and just puts all those into an order. Now, I never particularly like it when it's like this. I've only picked a selection of my images here to try and make this, this process a little bit quicker. This is about half the images that I took last night. Um, but you know you can see what you can see the principle. It just puts it in a nice straight line, uh, overlapping one image over the other. So you'd have to hope that you know if you got more colour variation, in this it would look even better. Uh, I do think that doesn't look particularly great. It's not my idea of a good image. So this is where you get to play with it and work out what is best for you. So for example, I think I worked out that if I do every fourth image, now I'm just going to do a few of these rather than all of them, will be here all day. Just to show you the, the, the point of what I'm trying to do here, I found this lined the circles up in the most aesthetically pleasing way. Uh, obviously that does all depend on the focal length you've taken image with, with, how out of focus you had Sirius in the first place. So there are, there are lots of different things you're going to need to consider uh, as you do this, but this is great. You could just check and, and uncheck it. I mean, it's, it's simple just to keep playing with it. Once you've just done that, you just hit the restack button. And as you can see here, I, I think that's just a little bit close. It's almost like every other star almost meeting at the points. 
Um, something just doesn't quite look right there, does it? But, you know, again, you can see, imagine if this had the, the colour variation you normally see in Sirius, you can see some here, um, then th th these will make a really good image. And again, from here you can simply take this into Photoshop, just do exactly the same as what we just did with the other images, uh, and that is your editing complete. So that, that's two great ways of, of producing these images and some very simple techniques in Photoshop to improve them. So that's pretty much all there is to the editing of that. So I think it's a great way to take some very simple images in a very short space of time. It's great fun doing it, especially when you kind of just get to, to wobble your tripod. It's not often that we aim to do something like that. If you found this video useful, please do like and subscribe to my channel. I am fairly new to all this and I hope you're finding this helpful. Um, and what I'll do now is I'm just going to share a few images from last night and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Clear skies. <laughs>